Yes, welcome to this GarageBand Creator Series video, where once again, we'll be talking to someone all about their creations in GarageBand. And we've got a very special guest lined up for you here today, live here on Studio Live today. But if it's your first time here on this channel, my name is Pete, and this is Studio Live today, where my goal is to help you create, record, and release your best music. And as part of this GarageBand Creator Series, what I want to do is talk to folks and find out how they create in GarageBand so that they can help you you create better music. And today, I would like to welcome all the way from California in the USA, Mr. David Thiessen. How are you doing today, David? Doing well, Pete. How about yourself? I'm doing exceptionally well here. It is great to have you here. We've uh, been chatting for probably over a year now, talking about GarageBand, talking about music. And uh, as I mentioned, it's so cool to learn other people and like, learn from other people about how they create and how they use GarageBand, but also about how they create their music. So why don't we kick off learning a little bit more about your background, your musical origin story, as I like to say. Where, where did your music love come from? You know, it's... Um... I've loved music my whole life. It's really, you know, easily the thing I'm most passionate about, um, you know, and, and, you know, from when I was a kid, like three years old, uh, yeah. you know, my mom's was saying you were into Stevie Wonder, Elton John, uh, you yeah. know, the classics and, and uh, I would just listen all the time. And that, that hasn't changed. I, music is around me constantly all day long. Um, you know, my family doesn't like to listen to music around me because I'll stop and rewind stuff. Oh, did you hear that? Did you hear that part? Uh, you know, so it's kind of a joke, but I mean, that's just how yeah. I listen to music. I listen very intensely and, and deeply. Um, so listening to music growing up was, um, you know, great pleasure. And, it, and um, but I didn't start playing music. First thing I ever played was a set of drums. Um, okay. My dad got a set of drums for his birthday. Yep. And, um, I walked out and I sat down and for somehow was instantly able to play. And my dad mm. was like, where did you learn that? I don't know, <laughs> you know, so, um, but I loved it. Uh, you know, got a guitar. I think I took a guitar class in eighth grade, learned that, you know, the campfire chords. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and then um, just, I didn't really start getting serious until kind of out of high school. Um you know, started to learn songs on the guitar and learn my favorite yeah. songs. I was really into like REM at the time. And it's a very yes. guitar driven band, mm -hmm. a lot of easy chords. And so um, it started to help me introduce, you know, how, how songs work. And I was able to play the same chords he was. And so it was, I was able yeah. to start, start really playing it. Um, and then, you know, that went on to being in a band a few years later. Um, you know, the first band I was in was some good friends with some really good musicians, actually. Uh, yeah. Played a lot of different styles and, and really got a lot out of that. And that's where my recording actually started. I would um, want to record the practices yeah. to see how we did and rearrange certain songs. And then we, the guy in the studio next to us, rehearsal space, had a four track. And I was like, what is that thing? Yeah. And then I started to record the band's kind of first four track demos. And then that, yeah. that's what got me hooked. And the rest is history. And here you are now in in GarageBand, uh, recording away. So very, very cool. And yeah, we've already we've already been nerding out in the pre-show about mm -hmm. uh, you know four tracks and eight tracks and, and machines and and our love of uh, of nineties and uh, and yeah. old school music as well. Yeah. Beastie Boys, Everclear, representing here. Uh, mm -hmm. So yeah, so it's, it's very cool to sort of hear hear your story, and we'll talk more about that as we sort of progress through. Uh, if you are here live, by the way, on on the show here, we've got uh, we've got Fried Productions, we've got Channel of Damien, we've got Johan Olivier. Olivier here from uh, South Africa. So we've got uh, everyone represented. Hello to you. If you do have questions for David that you wanted to throw here into the chat, do so. And if we've got time at the end, if we haven't uh, already talked about everything, we'll uh, circle back and answer any questions or any comments that you have there. So GarageBand is sort of how we met and connected uh, here. What actually got you into GarageBand? So you did the four track thing, you like the recording and capturing things. What got you into sort of the digital recording or, or starting using GarageBand? Um, you know, I forgot how I first heard about it. I've always had Apple phones, you yep. know, so one of the versions I had, it was, it was available. And, you know, I do remember the first thing I did is probably what a lot of people do is made a drum beat. Yeah. Like, okay. And um, chances are that I didn't, you know, check the velocity sensitivity or quantize it. So <laughs> I can only assume it was a hot mess. Right. Um, but I, don't, I didn't stick with it right away. Once, um, you know, once I started, I was like, okay, I'm going to really check out this program. Cause like mm -hmm. we were talking about before the show, I'm not a high tech person. Um, 
I was just telling you, I just used my first plugin last week. So, um, you know, I uh, started to use it. And for the first year or so, just really made beats and kind of, you know, ambient mm -hmm. sounds with keyboards and explored the drums, learned how to become pretty proficient on the, the drum pads, you know, using your fingers. Like yeah. I said, I've always wanted to be a drummer. So this was the <laughs> thing I was going to get. Um, <laughs> And then, you know, it slowly grew. And what was the real turning point was when I got an iRig uh, for the guitar. Yeah. And once that opened up, um, that was a game changer. You know, then I started to create songs and background music for the guitar, right? Like as a vehicle for me to, to play over the top. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that was probably about, I think I started GarageBand about four years ago. Yeah, okay. Um, so... Very cool. And uh, yeah, I think it's a, it's a pretty common story and it's, it's a very similar story to mine. As, as I said, we we're chatting before. And, and when I first got into GarageBand, it was really the same sort of thing. I saw this app on my phone. I'm like, hey, I like music. This looks like a music making app. And I'm like, oh, I can make an eight bar loop of a beat. Okay, <laughs> that's pretty cool. So I did that and virtual drums were cool and virtual guitar. I'm like, oh, this yeah. is all cool. And then, yeah, I think that the same sort of thing. When I realized that I could plug my guitar in, I could plug a microphone in, I could mm -hmm. start connecting actual real life instruments, not just use the touch screen. Yeah, it kind of went from something that was just yeah, programming and beats to I can make a whole song in yeah. GarageBand now. And, and I know that that's what you've done. And uh, I have buried the lead because we played a bit of your latest song there called Tribute uh, at the very start here. And down in the description is your SoundCloud link as well. So you've got a heap of songs. I think you were saying you, you, you've create you're quite a prolific creator yeah. you create uh, a lot of songs and and have always uh, adding to that soundcloud and i know when you you first reached out to me you said hey i've, I've got a few songs i'm like oh sure yeah S send me a link and then i get a link of about six songs and i'm sitting there i remember for about an hour just going oh what's this one gonna do oh what's this one gonna do because yeah the, and what i love is you've got like i say it, it's clear that you've worked out how to use the what GarageBand has in terms of its drums and in terms of its ambient sounds. And then you can layer your guitars on over the top, which uh, we will talk about as well, because getting a good guitar sound in GarageBand is something I know a lot of folks uh, struggle with. So we'll be, uh, we'll be tapping into your, your uh, knowledge of GarageBand there uh, yeah. as we go through. So we've talked about how long that was kind of my next question. So there you go. You've, you've already ticked that. Mm -hmm. You're efficient here. So around about four years of GarageBand, what would you say throughout that time uh, that you've been creating, what's good been your proudest moment so what's one track that you've created or what's one thing that you've done that you've gone yes when i look back this is the thing that uh, that is sort of redefined or that's opened up and something new for you there were a couple um there's a song you know i'm terrible at song titles it's like <laughs> it's my least favorite thing about, about music <laughs> song titles yeah um there's a song called slight crunch a uh, very 90s guitar drop d tuning um with with one of my favorite guitar solos but um you know the way that i was able to put the drums together and then the keyboards and then you know um just the whole sound of it i was like oh, okay this is a new a new style for me you know yeah. kind of encapsulated what the music i listen to it's like i feel like it's a little bit of sound garden yeah the drums aren't sound garden so there's different yeah. elements in there um that was a, a good one i was like okay this is this is a new direction to go in but there was a song, uh, this is a funny story. My, um, my wife's, you know, my, my kind of go-to person for show and my songs too. And yep. I had these three parts and, and I showed her the song. She's like, they don't go together. And mm -hmm. I was like, challenge accepted. I said, like, they do. <laughs> I think they do. And it's a song called Roadblock. Uh -huh. and it's, um, it's, it's got, it's heavy bass and drum driven. And then there's a middle section where it just drops out into these strummy acoustic guitars and some spacey background guitars. Um, and what happened was it took, it was hard to edit, right? It was hard to get the yeah. timing right and to um, get the acoustic guitar to come in at the right time. Cause there's like a one bar break. It was just a tough. And so it was like, I, I got to work on this. And the way I typically yeah. work in garage band is I just go through and go through and go through and then edit kind of by subtraction. Yeah, okay. Uh, this one was very like, no, I need to work on this this part right here. And I, I worked on it, worked on it, put it together. And she's like, okay, you got me, you convinced me. <laughs> I was like, sweet, it works. <laughs> and it was cool because it was a challenge. Um, mm. You know, I'm, I'm not a, uh, a precise musician. I love the flow of, of mm. music and kind of the, the ambient. And the, I like to hop into like that creative stream and go for yeah. a while. 
And, yeah. and um, there's a lot of musicians out there that I look that I like that are that I look up to that are precise musicians, and it's definitely one way of doing it. Um, yeah. That's not my on my forte though. Um, you know, so so working and, and trying to make that part uh, the way I wanted it, the way I heard it, and get it clean and clear was was an accomplishment. Me. Yeah, yeah, definitely, and 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 I, I like that story, and I like hearing that because I did I did want to ask about that. So you sort of alluded to it here. So you said that most of the time you're you're just recording. So will you record from end to end for a song? Like, will you do a whole guitar track and just lay down what you're feeling, and then repeat that again? Do you do you ever do sort of ch- like you said you did chunks in this one? Is, are you more likely to just record end to end and have all your tracks being that way, and then layer them up, and like you said, delete the bits you don't want afterwards? Yeah, yeah. There, if if you hear a song on my soundcloud that's acoustic guitar driven i'll have written that one before i'll, I'll write acoustic yep. stuff to the side and then finish that and then bring it to recording but mm-hmm. anything like uh the song you played tribute that was just um let's get a tempo going and yeah. I was playing bass and so i laid down a little bit of, and i was like oh what drums would go with this and then mm. kind of get this long chunk of music yeah um, and then try to find parts um every once in a while i'll record a part over but uh Again, a, a lot of times I use GarageBand. I love playing music. I love yeah. sitting down and playing for a while. And so a lot of what I use GarageBand for is to make my own rhythm tracks, essentially. It's yeah, gotten yeah. a little more in-depth than that. Yeah. Um, but that's kind of the was the, the, the basis of me starting it. So um, I do like playing. So I do, tend to do some longer stuff because, mm. again, the goal is for me to be playing and sitting down playing music for a few hours. And so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's one of the approaches I have, but yeah, often I'll just um, play through the whole thing and then go back and some. You know, sometimes yeah. I do drums first, and sometimes I add them later, which is hard after you've you know done two minutes worth of guitar to kind of go back and add drums underneath that. Yeah, totally. And I, I, I was talking to someone the other day about this because they were saying it was, it was on the group. So GarageBand users, uh, one of the great uh, the great Facebook group that we're both members of. There's a lot mm-hmm. of uh, great users there. So shout out to anyone here from GBU. Uh, someone was asking about do you do you record to a click track? Do you record drums first, and how do you go about that? And yeah, I, I basically said I've learned over time to put the drums in first because mm-hmm. if you get a groove down, it can be very challenging to get the drum groove to match a guitar mm-hmm. groove. It seems to be a lot easier easier to record in my experience to record a guitar groove that matches the drums rather than recording to yeah yeah not super inspiring <laughs> you know, yeah let's rock out yeah. uh, and, and it's interesting so do you think so from playing in bands early on because that's i mean that's kind of how my i've experienced writing songs as a band is mm-hmm. you will get together and you'll start jamming on an idea and you'll just jam away and it might be like a 20 minute jam and then you'll yeah. go back and say hey i really liked it when you played that bit i think this bit would work really well as a bridge to go between this bit and yeah. this bit you think that's where you get your your writing style from is it from your days in bands yeah. Yeah. I, you know, in the band I was in they like I said, they were good musicians. Um, I was the last one to join the band. And what I brought early on was kind of an arrangement, mm. you know, ear for arrangement. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you know, the, the, the jamming out of, of parts is, you know, over, I've been playing for a long time, so it doesn't take a long time for me to settle on a riff or something like that. Yeah. I can pretty yeah, yeah. much get into it. Um, you know, I like to be a little more concise. I feel like I've grown, especially in the last year, you know, since, since, you know, I met you and you kind of pointed me to this band. I feel like watching the videos has really um, helped me become more concise. You know, mm-hmm. my songs are, are a little more uh, defined, which yeah. is cool. Um, you know, so that's, that's kind of a, a growth thing for me in the last year or so. Very cool. Yeah. And, and yeah, it's exactly why, and I said at the start here, and I do mean it, it's exactly why I do these interviews is that I learn as much from these interviews and I hope that other people learn things because there'll be ideas that I'll come away with. And in fact, in this one, I'm, I'm inspired right now that I just want to go because what I love about your music is that there's, like I say, it's so ambient and I used to love doing that, just putting down a drum beat and then just like playing things for 10 minutes and seeing what mm-hmm. works. I don't do enough of that anymore. I'm, I'm very sort of surgical and precise in the way I write music because I think I'm time poor and I'm like, well, mm-hmm. I need to get this done. And I think we were chatting in the pre-show. I'm like, well, putting out a video every day uh, is really cool, but what it's done is it's actually 
taken time away from yeah. creating music. So yeah. I'm in this world where I'm like, I want to help other people create music, but I can't lose sight of creating my own music. Yeah. So I'm going to take a leaf out of your book and, and just put aside an hour to sit down, put a drum beat on, get a tempo, and just start playing things. And I think that will generate some ideas. So there you, there you go. go. Inspired. Um, so talking of GarageBand, uh, you've obviously learnt a lot over the last four years of using it and uh, this might be putting you on the spot, but what would you say is your, if you were going to give someone advice that's getting into GarageBand or is new to GarageBand or an amateur at it, what is something, what's your biggest tip, your top tip for creating using GarageBand? Um, you know, going back to what I said earlier, being kind of a low-tech guy, I'm, um, I have this quality it wasn't intentional, but I, I tend to um, not make things easy. Like say like, you know, I don't, I don't yeah. really have great quality guitars. I have guitars that have flaws. And so um, I, I've taken a lot of pride over the years in making those guitars sound good. Yeah. Um, and how that translates to GarageBand is like I was telling you before, I just used my first plugin last week. So what I would say is um, learn to maximize what GarageBand is just on its own. The program that you have when you open up your phone, there's so much there that you could, you know, I spent the last three years, four years just using that. And so yep. learn to master that, um, explore. They're adding new packs all the time, either keyboards or drums, you know, drum. The, one of the drum updates they did a couple months ago with all those old school um, like drum machines was, mm. I still haven't worked my way through all that, you know? So there's, there's plenty there. So work with that. Um, you know, don't get caught up in this idea that you need a lot of outboard gear to really um, make something good. Um, you know, I've, I've had to make some adjustments with the gear. I had to get a focus right, you know, to really kind of get the sounds the way I wanted to. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then a couple of little things. Like I said, I, some things I do every track when I go in, if I'm doing drums or keyboard, I always do the velocity sensitivity. I do it off most of the time sometimes mm -hmm. i have it on low because i know you can go back later and edit it edit the velocity but that can be a little time consuming and again if i'm doing a 16 bar part i, I want to be able to you know um control that i want to go back in and edit it afterwards and i've had many songs or tracks where i was like oh man i forgot to turn the velocity off yeah. now it's all over the place <laughs> um so that's some things yeah. i do first um another cool thing i i do is if I'm recording a song that has a lot of, um, you know, no, no digital audio, you know, you can't change tempo once you record vocals or, or guitars or anything. But if I has all electronic or, you know, uh, electronic instruments, um, I'll, I'll duplicate that song and cut the tempo by like 30 beats per minute. And, and often you get a whole new sound. You get a whole new song. You're like, wait a minute. You know, and it's like it slows it down and it just creates a whole different mood. And sometimes I'll just go, OK, that's that's a new thing now. Yeah. Um, okay. that's a cool thing to do. And then one other thing I like to do is, um, you know, one of the compliments my wife's gives me, wife gives me, she said, your songs are really full sounding. They really have a lot of depth mm -hmm. to them. Yes. So some tricks that I do is if I have a keyboard line that I like, um, oftentimes I'll, I'll, uh, copy it and paste it to another keyboard track and then drop it down an octave. Uh, um, and yep. so it's, it's there. Um, and then you change the keyboard sound. Now you've got two different keyboards playing the same thing, but they're an octave apart. Sounds yeah. a little bit different. Sometimes I'll take that original track, the original keyboard track out in the second verse. And now I've got all, you know, the same line is there. The same keyboard line is there, but a different keyboard's playing it in a different octave. So just yeah. little tricks, you know, that, that I've learned. And I don't even know where they came from. They just pop in my head. So... <laughs> That's uh, oh, that's so. There's so much to digest there. So I recommend if you're watching on the replay here, hello. First of all, make sure you uh, if you get some value out of this, hit the like button, and uh, yeah, if you've got any comments that you want, any questions for David or for myself about GarageBand creating, drop those in the comments. But uh, yeah, I know I'm gonna have to go back and listen because I think you gave me five tips there. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> I was the one and I get five. Which is <laughs> uh, but yeah, in terms of digesting those, I'm going to have to go back and re-listen. But I really love that in terms of getting that sort of full range and that spectrum of sounds. And it's weird because um, I know most of the stuff you do is instrumental. Mm -hmm. Correct all, in that. It, yeah. uh, all, all instrumental. And I think because I do a lot of vocal stuff, I, I've used those techniques. I've used that octave techniques mm -hmm. of a double vocal at an octave below. Never thought to use it on a keyboard. Isn't that yeah. strange? Yeah. I, I've never just gone, hey, this works really well for thickening up vocals. Wouldn't this work really well for thickening up a, 
a synth sound or yeah. an organ or a keyboard. Like I, I don't do that. And and I'm also a piano player. So I know about, you know, the de- having an octave in your left hand is a piano playing thing. So there you go. Sometimes someone just has to say something to yeah. you that's quite bold. Yeah. Like, yeah, got yeah. to give that a try for sure. Now you talked a little bit there about gear. So you started out with an iRig and you just mentioned that you've upgraded to a, a focus right, I believe, mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. A, a, a USB interface now that you're using with your your Yep. I, so you an iPhone or an iPad that you exclusively record? iPhone? Cool, you know. Very, very so cool. I, yeah, excellent. So uh, yeah, so what is so in terms of that? So you, you, you're connecting up there, and you've got your guitars, and you've got your audio interfaces. Is there a piece of gear, and it could be a guitar, or it could be something that you use with your rig that you that you like that is probably your favorite piece of gear? If you're creating, you're like, this is the one bit of gear I go to, and I know I'm going to get a good sound or create a good track. Well, if you if you listen to any of my SoundCloud, you'll you'll notice I use a lot of wah wah pedal. Yeah, <laughs> that's my cool. that's my thing, and that actually comes from being in the band, and that's how I got my sound to cut through because the rhythm section was really full. Yeah, and I would yeah. get lost, and so I started to use the wah wah pedal to kind of cut through that noise. Um, yeah, and then it just stuck with me. It became a good way of uh, expressing. So now I kind of hear things using the wah wah pedal. Um, as, as it relates to GarageBand, um, getting a MIDI keyboard was really helpful, uh, yeah, yeah. to get the full range of the keys and not just the little keypad on the, on the <laughs> iPhone, you know, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. getting that was helpful because I also found it made it easier to play, make drum parts. Cause you get little, little nuances, right? You get the cymbal ride, uh, you get the bell of the cymbal and it's all there. You don't have to find it on that little phone screen. Yes. That, that was really helpful. Uh, oh, there you go. Again, two two really good tips. So, yes, MIDI keyboards and wah-wah pedals. And I, <laughs> my, my, my wah is uh, in pieces down in my drawer down there. I'm a little ah. bit sad. I have a really nice sort of old school Dunlop, Jimi Hendrix, Crybaby, and uh, it's, yeah, it's falling apart. So it needs some tender loving care. So there you go. You've inspired me. Maybe I need to uh, take that because I'm, I'm not I'm not a handyman, so I'm not yeah. going to be touching it, but I'm going to take it to someone who knows better than me to, uh, to give it some love and attention. Very, very cool. Well, uh, I, I did ask at the start here if we had any questions, uh, and we do have a couple of folks here, and then we'll, we'll answer a couple of questions here, and then we'll circle back and we'll finish up uh, with one final couple of que- one final couple one final question for for David here. So we had a question here from uh, Word Real. Is there an easy way to drop an octave? So why don't you sort of go delve into a bit of the technique, I guess, so in GarageBand, how do you drop down that octave and how do you do that simple transposition? Yeah, and exactly. In the track settings, um, you go up to the top where it says track settings and then you drop it down and it says, um, you know, it's trans- transposition. And then you yeah. can go an octave up, you can do an octave down, you can do a couple, uh, you know, either way. You can do a semitone. Yes. Um, so that's, and again, that goes back to, to minim, maximizing what GarageBand offers you. There's so much depth there that, that that's not an outboard feature. It's just right there in it. Um, yeah. yeah. It's all right there. And that's so cool. Like, yeah, I don't know that you, you mentioned sort of the four tracks and the eight tracks. And uh, you remember back in those days, like you, you wanted the tape delay, you'd literally have to use a tape mm-hmm. machine. Yeah. Get the tape delay. That's why it's cool. There's been people these days, I'm not going to throw a tape delay on that without even realizing yeah. they used to be literally a tape that was recording and playing back the same piece to actually delay the audio. So, yeah, we're, we're in a pretty blessed time yeah. where we have all the yeah, yeah. access to these things. But, yeah, it, it, uh, absolutely. If you go to your track there, you go to your track settings, you can you can quantize and then you can transfer expose and you can do all the all the cool things and um, yeah if you if you want to learn more about that you know search on studio live today search for transpose transposition you'll be able to find a video exactly. i'm sure uh another question here and uh, i'm not sure if you use microphones a lot in your mm-hmm. recording knowing that you I don't do. use vocals but um in terms of so i guess this is more of a vocal sort of question so how do i prevent the p's and s's from being so accentuated so i guess it's around getting better quality vocals when you're using a microphone do you have i've got a few ideas but do you have any tips when you're recording with a mic any tips for getting a better sound in general um I don't do a lot of vocals. I've done a couple of vocal uh, songs with my daughter. Uh, one of them was on my SoundCloud, which is which was pretty cool. Um, you know, you can if you have access to different microphones. Um, you know, condensers will pick up the high the highs a little bit. And they're they're pretty great for vocals. If it's if your condenser is not working great, try a dynamic maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, if you run it into a mixer, kind of roll off the highs. Um, you know, those that would be my suggestion. 
Yeah, definitely. And I think if you are starting out and if you're using you know, a cheap microphone or even, and I've said, I've, I've used the microphone, as, as I think Johan's saying here, on my headset. And mm -hmm. the, the key there is to, a lot of people think that microphones, that you have to be this mm -hmm. close to a microphone. If you look at, look at David and I now, mm -hmm. we've got some distance here. You don't have to eat the microphone. If you want to get your popping P's and your S's sounds, you're going to get a lot more the closer you are. So don't do not do what they do in the magazines and be like right up on your yeah. microphone. Give yourself some <laughs> space. Give the, the, the uh, sound some space and that's going to help you pop some peas. And, of course, a pop filter like uh, like this one here or make sure you're to the side of the microphone so you're not talking directly into the diaphragm of the microphone. So that's my couple of tips on mm -hmm. that one. So uh, thank you for your question there. If you are, as I said, on the replay here, you haven't missed out, just drop down into the comments and ask David all the tough questions about Garage. And we'll make sure that he returns here and, and answers all of those questions for you. So uh, let's uh, let's finish off here with uh, with the question that I like to ask people at the end here. And that you've given me five pieces of advice for every time I ask for one. So feel free to <laughs> embellish and give me a bunch of different answers here. Sorry about what is the best piece or pieces of advice you've been given about music creation? Either something you were given and learned, or throughout your experience that you've learned that you would pass on to someone who is creating music. Uh, I'll limit it to two. I got two. <laughs> Love uh, it. Number one was, you know, learn the rules and then break them. Right. And it's um, learning how music works just allows you to express yourself. It doesn't mean you have to follow it, but it sure is nice to have a melodic idea uh, within a chord structure and know how to get there, you know, and know how to get there quickly and understand it. And um, that's what I would say, learn, learn a little bit of music theory, you don't have to make, you know, become a classically trained musician, but it sure helps, you know, express yourself, you know, a little bit easier. And then the other one is, um, and I actually wrote this one down, uh, comparison is the death of joy. So don't, oh, don't compare yourself to other people, you know, if there's one thing that, that the internet has shown me is like, wow, there's a lot of good musicians out there. There's a lot of great mm -hmm. guitar players and um it could be easy to get frustrated and just go what what am i even doing you know there's so <laughs> many good players out there um you know, don't compare yourself to people mm. it's, it's not it's not worth it that that is some super wise words and obviously words that i echo and and what i try to promote here on the channel is exactly that so yes the, the best person to compare yourself to is you six months ago because as long as you are learning and improving and trying new things i think you actually can't possibly lose uh, there's no actual way to do the wrong thing here and like you say i, I do love that and so what, what i need the exact words again what was the com comparison the comparison is the death of joy Love it. Comparison is the death of joy. That should be the, the title of this video. We might be changing that after the show. <laughs> Comparison is the death of joy. There you go. Um, thank you. It's been an absolute pleasure having you My here on, on the show. Uh, are there any parting words that you have uh, before we finish up here today? No, I, I want to thank you. I, you know, you, again, you were a game changer. You were, uh, you were gracious enough to send me in the direction of the, the garage band group. Um, you know, I've, I've learned a ton from you, uh, you know your videos i think it's great what you're doing so keep up you know what you're doing i i keep learning from you every week every month so um yeah i just appreciate all that all that knowledge and uh wisdom thank you thank you very much uh, yeah no, no 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 chance of it stopping unless people tell me not to but even then i probably won't because what was it uh, not com not comparing myself to anyone else love it uh I'll be, I'll be thinking about that all day and i'll be going and listening to beastie boys now and a bunch of other yeah. bands that we've been talking about uh as well uh excellent job so thank you for all those that, all those that he were here live on the the show thank you for joining us live if you're watching on the replay and you got some value out of this uh drop us a comment say hello to, to david and myself there and if you got some value hit the like button as well that would help us out if you're not subscribed and you do want to catch up on interviews like this as well as all the other videos and tips and tricks here on the channel make sure you subscribe and uh, on behalf of my guest today david Thiessen, uh check out his soundcloud in the description below and then enjoy the rest of your day thanks folks see ya thank you pete